folks, how we doing? Welcome back to Good Works Tractors. Got a good one for you today. We are gonna be seeding. We have a nice prepared area here to put our food plot screen in. We're gonna do that today with our brand new Summit TX25 tractor. Now we just recently released a couple of videos going all over the amazing features, all about Summit, how it's the best value that's on the market and the history to give you some confidence, but we have this machine here, so we're gonna put it to work. We're gonna put it through its paces. You know, I'm not the easiest on my equipment, so I think we're gonna be a good field tester for Summit. Now, this is a little bit bigger than my 1025, all right, and we're gonna do some comparison videos. I've got that 2025R, I've got a 3025E, I've got my 1025R too. If anybody wants to bring over a Kubota B-Series as well, we can compare it against that too, or, or anything else in that similar frame size and, and, and engine horsepower size. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to see how this stacks up against the competition. But what I love is that this thing is just ready to get to work. It's already set up with the remotes all over it, self-leveling loader. R14 tires on here, you know I love those. Rim guard ballast inside these tires too. It's just full of features, but I've, I've got a Kubota BX over there. I'm still, I haven't got around to it. To add a remote to that on the back side, on the front side, you know, I did change the tires out on there, but I, these are all extra costs that I'm doing on that BX before I can actually put it to work. I had to do the same stuff on my 1025. On any tractor I keep, I have to go back add all this stuff on to make it set up the way I want to. This one already comes that way right out of the factory. So you're gonna see the Summit tractor a lot, you know? So they sent me over this tractor to put it in videos, you know, to use with my attachments, to put it to work in the real world. I'm, I'm just like you guys, right? I'm not a dealer, I don't sell these. I use my equipment, I am a dealer for attachments, right? So you can buy attachments from me, but you can't buy the Summit tractor from me. You can go right to Summit's website. They're gonna tell you where you can buy that. But they wanted me to test this out because they know I'm gonna give you the truth. If there's a problem with it, I'm gonna tell you about it. If there's great stuff about it, I'm gonna tell you about it. I'm gonna show you the good and the bad because that's my reputation on the line, right? It was a big commitment for me to accept that responsibility and so I'm not gonna let you guys down. Alrighty folks, so first project today, we're gonna get started now. I don't wanna wait any longer. And then we're gonna have to start bringing over bigger attachments to the property here. <laughs> All my stuff's for my 1025 smaller. So we're gonna get some bigger stuff because this can handle bigger attachments, you know, 60 inches wide on brush hogs and tillers and all that kind of thing compared to the 48s on the 1025. But that's for another video, let's get to work. RimGuard is our new channel sponsor and we are so happy to have them on board because they align with our goals as well of preaching tractor safety, and that's what they're all about. And RimGuard is a liquid ballast solution. It goes right inside your tires. It's a beet juice byproduct, all right? And so not only is it gonna add physical pounds, hundreds of pounds of weight to the backside of your tractor that are gonna aid in traction or power to the ground, but they're also gonna stabilize your tractor, make it safer to operate, and they're gonna optimize the loader performance by keeping those rear wheels planted lifting up as much weight as you possibly can with that front end loader when you need it. We'll put a link down below to RimGuard's website. They have a fantastic dealer locator. So they have over a thousand dealers nationwide. You can plug in your zip code right on their website. They'll tell you where the closest dealer is. You can take your tractor in to have the tires loaded up or oftentimes they have mobile techs that can come to you as well. So using the Ag Spray electric spreader, so this thing's really nice, it's variable width, you know, so I'm kind of matching it up there to the width that we have. Uh, I think it's about the number four or five setting that I have it on there, but I realized I was a little excited and burned through a whole bag of seed that was supposed to take the whole, last the whole time, and I burned through that before we even got to the turn. Um, forgot, to, forgot to change my gate setting on there, and so we ran through that pretty darn quick. Um, I, was, I was a little excited. 
so anyway, I had to add another bag of seed and, and we may have um, a little heavy of a screen, but who knows? We'll find out, I suppose. And uh, anyway, I went through that pretty, pretty easily. I did some back and forth, back and forth, I think three passes uh, total on the rest. I, I cut the gate setting in half there and just took my time. And um, I think it was pretty well dialed in there by the end. One thing I am realizing is that I need to get a quick hitch on my Summit tractor here. So I'm gonna add on a Spico probably, uh, oh boy, by next week, that's for sure. I need to get one on here. So then I need to get this stuff rolled in, right? And I do not have a Colts Packer out here. Um, I sold off all of them that would fit on a tractor this size. Got more coming in, but didn't have a Colts Packer out here to, to pack that in. And I thought, well, I could just use the tires, right? And drive over it over and over and over, but that'd be a lot of passes. So I thought, hey, I got this swell idea. Let's hook up a pulverizer. We'll crank that thing, tilt it all the way back so the shanks aren't engaging, but just the roller on the backside. And that should work like a charm, right? Well, it worked so-so on the first leg, uh, just kind of driving forwards and backwards on there. There was a few times where the back row of shanks caught the ground and uh, pulled things along a little bit, because this is still a newly tilled area. We've plowed it, we've dissed it, we've tilled it, and there's still some clumps of grass that are in there and so those kind of bunch up together when they snag on something and pull along and then along comes the soil and everything else but it worked pretty decent overall in this first leg when we got to the second leg i don't know why it, well it is it is rougher terrain over there in general but that really started to bind up a lot of material and drag that along and did not work very well um, at all so by the end i was getting frustrated enough where i just started actually driving back and forth with the tires and kind of rolling in compacting it in there a bit uh, this seed does not need to be planted very deep and it's not like a two inch depth or anything like that so it's, it's pretty shallow less than an inch you want to get it down and and i mean you could use a drag harrow if you had one of those the colts pack are great um, i ended up just reverting back to the tractor tires and even after we're done this video i'm probably going to drive a few more times on it um, just to really pack it in good but chris and i walked around took a look and i mean you can see a few seeds here and there but not all that many we used the, that cedar that I bought off of Amazon, a field tough cedar, I think was the name. And I feel like there's less seed that we can see right now doing this than there was with that cedar that we used previously. Now this seed is a heavy duty screening material. It's gonna grow, well, we're planting it in July. So it may get seven, eight foot tall. If you plant it in early June, like our other location, it's supposed to get over 12 foot tall. So I'm really excited to see how that turns out. Um, I checked in on it out there oh about a week and a half ago and it was already five or six inches high at that point and so i'm sure i'm going to get back out there next week i'm sure it's going to be hopefully close to a foot by now it's supposed to really take off and it's better to plant it when it's dry out versus uh, when it's wet in this like in may for example so wait until june or late june early june somewhere in there if you can i'm doing it in july here kind of on purpose because i wanted to show you guys what it would look like um, with an early june planting and with a uh, a july planting as well and of course it is different different soil different location but it's still in in uh, southwest michigan about a half hour apart from each other so fairly similar circumstances so if tractor worked flawlessly just like it should you know i do like that this has that twin touch pedal similar to the john deere setup there um very smooth steering on this thing it's like got this crazy awesome power steering on here so um it's just very easy to spin no resistance so you can fine tune it just like you want to handled very nicely the extra weight i think on the back end this is supposed to be the heaviest tractor in its class and it feels like it because it's very very solid feeling when you're driving along you know you do have the the rim guard ballast weight in here as well but it's just a you, you feel planted to the ground i guess is the way uh, to describe it best so of course we're gonna have many more opportunities with the summit tractor get to know that a little bit better but for the first job it tackled it well folks so this is what that heavy duty food plot screen looks like about three weeks after it's been planted and we planted this near the tail end of the planting season for this um, for this kind of crop right here about july 10th all right so you can plant it they say up until around the end of july so you know we planted out at a richland property in the middle of june i think it was and and about well we're going to show you some video about six weeks or a month and a half later that stuff was almost six foot high all right and so it really takes off after it kind of gets going and so at about the three week mark this is what it looks like right here at our other property, we used a planter to put that seed in. And here we are using a cedar and, a, and well, <laughs> we're sort of cultipacking it in. We're using a pulverizer uh, to try to roll this in today and then tractor tires as well. So a different application, different way to put it in. We had inconsistent results with this application, but I wanted to show you what it looks like since it's been a few weeks. 
and you can see it's, it's really starting to germinate, but it's spotty. There's heavier pockets and there's thinner pockets. And in the very beginning when we went to, to seed, it was a really heavy application and I, I forgot to dial that back down. And this is a corner where it probably got some more double coverage, but you can see it's kind of, you know, not quite to the knees, but it's a high shin area there. So it's a, it's a solid foot and a half tall on average, uh, but a little sparse still. So I may even though it's the beginning of August, still throw uh, some of that screen in here and just to see if it takes hold and germinates and kind of thickens it up in pockets. But that stuff over there that got planted earlier is kicking butt. And I'm hoping that this starts to take off too in another couple of weeks and we're seeing it up waist high or chest high. I guess time will tell. And so this is a little close up of this area, it's kind of where my hand is covering uh, this section. I placed or I sprayed some uh, clothodum, however you say it, C L E T H O D I M. Um, Let's see, that was Sunday, so it's Wednesday, so that's so three, three days ago. Um, and you can see it's starting to, to wilt some of the plants here. Not, not all the way up, but well, actually there's some brown spot all the way through here. And the intent was to kill off the grass, which the grass, for the most part, seems to be doing pretty good. And it's killing this screen. Well, I don't know if it's killing it, but it's, it's not looking as good as the area, the rest of it that didn't uh, get sprayed. So I wanted to see if I can kill the grass in here. Uh, spraying that but I'm not having the best results so far I guess we'll give it some more time and see what happens um, but I did a couple test areas to see how that would react to it before spraying the whole thing and potentially wiping it out and then one other final note is I planted this in varying widths and over at our other property I planted in just one row five foot wide and then um, 10 foot wide and then I think we did 15 or 20 foot wide and I think you really want to plant this at least probably about 10 foot wide or wider and uh, the the thinnest area you can really kind of see through it a bit and maybe it'll fill out more as it continues to grow and and, and uh, get established but those thicker passes where we had 10 feet minimum maybe 15 feet or more super thick already you can't see anything through there at all and so keep that in mind when you're planting about something like you see here is an overall good width uh, anything narrower and you're probably going to have some of those pockets that show up and and the screen's not gonna do what it's intended to do. That's gonna do it for us today, folks. So if you are looking for something for your tractor, for the front end loader, the three-point hitch, we'd love to help you out. Go to goodworkstractors.com. We sell and ship all over the country. For all the information you need on a Summit tractor, go to summittractors.com. All sorts of support over there, where to buy it, all sorts of good stuff, a feature overview and everything else as well. And if you wanna follow along on the journey with Summit, hit that subscribe button right down below. Completely free, no obligations, nothing like that. It'll just alert you anytime we have a new video coming out so you can see what's going on. I wanna thank you for taking time out of your day to stop by. And until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.